Welcome back to Waterpark Rangers Let's Play Pikmin 2. Um, at this point in the game, we've officially cleared nearly everything, all the other three areas, so we just have this last new area to check out, and really that'll be the end of the game. The Wistful Wild. As you've seen, each of the areas has had a season-based theme, and this one finishes the four with fall, or autumn, or whichever you prefer. And it's also pretty interesting because um, as I may have mentioned before, the Awakening Wood is based off the Forest of Hope map, uh, Perplexing Pool is based off the Distant Spring map, although the Valley of Repose a map is actually completely unique. Some people say it's Forest Enable, but I actually know. I've had a good look at both maps, it's not uh, a remake of the Forest Enable from Pikmin 1. This last area is actually a combination of the first and last areas uh, from the first Pikmin game, which is pretty cool. We've actually landed... Um, in the arena where you fight the final boss from Pikmin 1, which is kind of a cool touch. Um, they give a kind of weird reason for why that's, it's like that in the game, but I might explain that at a later point. Um, for now, we brought out our 100 purple Pikmin, because this is that treasure that we need 100 purple Pikmin to pick up. It's an incredibly heavy weight. Um, even with Ultra Spicy Spray, this is going to take forever for them to take it back. So just let them go about their incredibly slow business of just bringing it back to the ship. And in the meantime, this is a great time to uh, test out your Rocket Fist upgrade on a lot of the enemies in this area. We have Dwarf Red Bulborbs. Uh, incidentally, this has been like the first time in a long time that we fought them. Um, wow. They only really appear like in the... There's only like one or two in the first two areas of the game. And they're like hardly found anywhere else. It's kind of pathetic, actually for an enemy that's supposed to be kind of common, but actually that's going to be made up. That's going to be paid back in full in a little while, a few episodes. You'll see why. Uh, anyway, over here we have quite a nasty assortment of enemies by the river. A fiery blowhog, which kind of, once again, I feel is just out of place in this area. A cloaking burrow that's by the bridge. Uh, those things actually can eat bridges and pull them back, in case you didn't know. They can do that just like sheer grubs can. Um, and a gadolin groink! <laughs> a gadolin groink, yes, that enemy, the new one that we found right at the end of the last dungeon that we went into in the Valley of Repose now actually appears in the overworld. Uh, please excuse that, the phone just went off. It's always annoying when something like that happens. But yes, the Gatling Gorink um, now appears in the overworld, so it is definitely a major threat to your Pikmin, as it, as it was in the dungeon. Um, I think what I've been doing so far with respawning enemies that don't necessarily die is I haven't been bringing them back to the base, like, I haven't, like, dragged them into the ship, and in this case, I don't think I'm going to drag this guy into the onion, because maybe this has become like a new requirement of this incredibly uh, dangerous run of the game, <laughs> which is going to be not bringing back the respawning enemies. So I think the idea of the Gatling Droid for this run is we're just going to knock it out, and it's going to come back, and every time it comes back, we're not going to bring it back to the ship, we're just going to kill it again. So we're going to see how that uh, fares for us. Honestly, I think I can handle it. Gatling Droids, although they're definitely one of my... Uh, one definitely one of the enemies that I think are most are most dangerous in the game. They're not bad if you have a Bitter Spray. If you have a Bitter Spray, you can take them down. So I recommend Bitter Sprays being used for things like Spotty Bull Bears, Gatling Groiks, and Fiery Bull Blaxes. Those are the three uh, enemies that you want Bitter Sprays for. And is this Yellow Wally Wonks? Oh my god, it's getting like a five hit combo on us. This is insane. Because every time it, it jumps up, it hits us again. This is insane. All of our might die. That was, that was crazy right there. That yellow Wally Wall just pounded the crap out of Olimar. Way to ruin his day. And we were doing so well against all those definitely much more dangerous enemies. But as you know, Wally Wogs are bad enough. Even if they're just yellow Wally Wogs. Come to think of it, I know that the gray Wally Wogs, like the ones that are just called Wally Wogs in this game, are stronger than the yellow versions. But in Pikmin 1, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think they, they might both be the same amount of strength. I think they just changed that for this game because they figured that they need to make underground enemies uh, more difficult. And uh, interestingly enough, they chose to keep th those uh, gray Wally Wogs underground, but they didn't seem to have a problem with letting fiery blowhogs roam wherever they please. No matter how much that annoys me. Uh, anyway, we are not going to go to the area where the Gatling Groink yet because. Um, well, actually, yeah, because there's a treasure that I'm intent on getting today. I would like to go into the Cavern of Chaos on this day, but because well, the Gatling Groink might give us more trouble, we may run out of the time to go into the dungeon, so you may just have to save that for the next day. We actually might just end up doing all the dungeons in this area in a single day, 
which would be pretty crazy. I know it sounds crazy, but this isn't a huge area, so they're easy to get to. Um, and of course, I'll just take long breaks in between, that way I don't get too tuckered out. Because they are tests of endurance. These last dungeons are are longer than the other ones we've been in so far. They're all longer than even the subterranean complex, which, which had nine floors. And, uh, wow, they might take up a good amount of episodes. I don't think that the Wistful Wilds overworld is really going to take that many episodes. It's kind of funny, now that I have like have most of this Let's Play done, pretty much, um, so much footage recorded, I can really see like how much time goes into each of the areas. Yeah, we got a decorated cannon beetle right there. And I was just checking and seeing roughly the same amount of hours goes into each area. Um, about three from the looks of it. There's about It takes about three hours per area for me on this run. That's, that seems to be the running theme. And most of that is spent underground. Actually, it's now that I was really looking into it, it's kind of unsettling how little overworld action there is compared to underground. But anyway, over here we have the last uh, over overworld drain in the game. Come to think of it, there are there aren't actually any drains um, in the underground area, so I suppose that was the last drain. And once again, it gets rid of some of the cool scenery by taking care of the water that I really liked that was there. And now I think it's time we paid a visit to the bridge before that Gatling Groink respawns. Maybe we should fight the Snoop... Maybe we'll just take out the Snoopy Stitch if we're gonna worry back. It's definitely... Oh, no! Wow, it respawned quickly. Well, maybe the Yellow Wallywog should be dealt with first. I'm not... I'm actually not sure. Let's just kill it and move on. We'll just move on with our lives. Yeah, it doesn't have much in the way of HP, so I'm not really worried. What I always liked was how uh, when Pikmin are fighting it, and then the Wallywog wants to go back to its like territory. Haha, <laughs> the Gatling Groink shot it! Awesome, thank you Gatling Groink! Sometimes Gatling Groinks can be useful, like the decorated cannon beetle. Uh, their projectile attacks can be used to damage and defeat other enemies, so that's just a useful strategy. And on a side note, I just... I, I guess I have to mention that I pretty much think that the Gatling Groink is Pikmin's weirdest enemy, and perhaps one of the weirdest enemies I've seen in any video game. And this is coming from someone who's played all three of the all three of the uh, the Mother Trilogy games, which has pretty crazy enemies. Like, uh, let's see, there's hippies, um, violent modern art. Okay, never mind. Maybe Earthbound or Mother Three still has some pretty weird things. Yeah, Mother Three. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe Mother Three has the weirdest enemy. There's this enemy in Mother Three. This isn't really a spoiler which is an optional one you can fight, which I would almost consider a mini-boss in its own right, which basically looks like a pair of dancing hot dogs taped together, and it's actually a surprisingly powerful fighter, it just doesn't have very much HP. Uh, it's called the Fish Row Man, because apparently those hot dogs looking things are actually like what some fish eggs look like, and fish eggs are apparently called Fish Row. Uh, so yeah, I guess the more you know. And interestingly enough, it seems like this bridge is taking longer to build. I remember the one in the Waking Wood? Rolled out like a snap, but even with a hundred blues, for some reason, this is going really slowly. I think the bridge programming is a little bit weird in this game. But that being said, it's better than it was in the first, because at least your Pikmin are smart and they gravitate towards the center of the bridge. And, odd, how did Pikmin get out of my party? I noticed that we only have 97. Did some die or something? Did... Was there a counter glitch? That's always really annoying when that happens. Oh! Well, screw you guys! You made me pause to look at the map, so we wasted time. Now for the Snoopy Snitch... Now for the Snoopy Snitch Bug, uh... Whew, today is just battle after battle. A lot of enemies in a concentrated space. That's gonna be a running theme for the next... For basically the remainder of this Let's Play. There's gonna be a much heavier concentration... A concentration of enemies than we've encountered thus far. Let's see, I figure what I rated, uh, Subterranean Complex. Four stars? Yeah, probably four stars. Okay, and you blue Pikmin are being stupid. Uh, you guys somehow got stuck on the rock. Oh god, the rock. Just like that, um... Not just like, uh... Dwayne Johnson. I'm also thinking of that movie that had Sean Connery, Nicolas Cage. I personally think it was pretty much horrible, but it seems like some people out there actually like it. I don't know. It seems really generic and... Uh, I th I'm pretty sure John Williams did the music, though, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it was good. Ah, uh, whatever. I should be talking about things we're doing. Uh, so we're gonna basically just bring these yellows um, past into this area over here, which is actually the final trials landing site for Pikmin One. I think you're kind of if you know the if you know the map of the final trial from the first game well, you could tell this is where the onions land. 
we're gonna be heading over to the electric fence over there um, after we defeat this watery blowhog so I guess we'll take down that fence next episode and progress further into the wistful wild see you then